welcome to the class of legends. Thank you, thank you. It's not about me. I thought this was the legends in your own mind class. Well, who, who's tricking me? Now, I talked to several members of the club today, our intelligent members, and I told them who the legends class was, and they were furring their brow in a vain attempt to understand the situation. And his name is Leonid Stein, or if you're Russian, you should slow down. No, really, you should, you might pronounce his name Stein. Okay, Leonid Stein, Leonid Stein, whatever. Okay, now Stein was one of the best players never to become world champion, but he died at a very young age. What age? I don't know, I'm not a historian. So Stein was a very strong attacking player. And when I was a young lad of, oh, I don't know, 14, uh, I had a friend, uh, international master Danny Edelman, who doesn't play chess anymore, but his daughter does, Sadie. And Danny would always say, who is better, Bronstein or Stein? And at this chess club, they would just say, who and who? Okay, but Bronstein played for the world championship and was very close to winning, if not for losing game 23, right, Ken West? And instead, he tied the match and was never the world champion. Uh, Stein never played for the world championship, but he won a lot of games in all kinds of championships for Soviet Union, the Ukraine, etc. Now, if you own a copy of my 60 memorable games, by which world champion? Bobby Fischer, one of his games was against Stein. It was in a Rui Lopez where Fischer played on the king's side and Stein played on the queen's side. And there's a really cool diagram in the book where black has knights on b4 and c4 and pawns on b5 and c5. And it looks really cool until he resigned. Then it looked less cool. <laughs> okay, so the first two games, he's playing Rufus and Doofus. So he gives them the smackdown. But they were actually pretty strong in the 40s. Okay, once we got to the 50s, Rufus and Doofus slowed down a little bit. All right, uh, right Arjun? Yeah. All right, so Stein is white, okay? Now this game was played in 1959. Were you there watching Ken West? And my second question is, were you alive then? I was alive then. Yeah, did you play chess? No, I did not. Uh, Arjun, who was there, yeah? Um, you. No, I wasn't there. I, I wasn't born for 10 more years. You, yeah. You were there? All right, if you're not there, raise your hand. Okay, so they played the Queen's Gambit. Oh, oh, we make an exception for Ken West. The other kind of accepted. Is this the Fisher game you're going over? No, no, this is the game Stein versus some guy I never heard of. And I can't pronounce his name, so he's probably pretty good. Can't pronounce his name. It's Kryatkowski, something like that. Okay, so he plays E4, E5, and actually, the line that they play is pretty modern. So for 1959, those guys were, I would say about 15 minutes ahead of their time. Pretty good. Okay, and this is still theory now. This is actually one of the main lines recommended by Kokomo of all players. Okay, castles, and I, this is still played today. Knight G5. Now, you, you gotta remember that Preston's not white, it just seems like it. Okay, Stein was a big attacking player, and you'll see in the games today, he liked to give the beat down, he didn't play passive. Most of the players today are chicken, and I don't like that because I'm a vegetarian. Right, Arjun? Yeah. You agree? You have a question or your hands are up? I have a question. Yeah. What color was Stein? Stein was white. Now, this is actually a coincidence, I don't want to scare anybody. I looked at hundreds of games, because I work really hard here. And every game I found where Stein won and played great, he was white. So maybe with black, not so good. So Stein's always white. Now, notice F7 is attacked, because F7 is attacked. So black played knight H6, defending F7. But that didn't stop Stein. You guys are like, well, he defended F7, so I can't take on F7. Well, you can't, but he did. Bam. Okay, and after they traded thousands of pieces, then White played the brilliant move, Arjun. Queen H5. Queen H5, if only Kokomo had seen it. Queen H5 check, and now Black's king is running around. Material is equal, Black's position is probably okay, but Stein doesn't stop there, he keeps coming. Okay, he doesn't trade queens like most of you would. He wants to attack the black king. Okay, black has a lead in development, but black's king is a little suspicious. 
So F4, again, Preston wasn't white, but it looks like Preston's white. So, all right. So rook d8, f5, rawr. All right, now, in the strangest move I've ever seen, which follows all of my theories, that's why it's strange. After gf, white made a move none of you would ever predict. Your only chance of predicting it is that I said you wouldn't predict it, and I said that I would play it. That's your only hope. Julian, bam. Is that what you would play? Yeah, so queen d1, I like retreating, and I like playing queen h5 check. And he retreated, then played queen h5 check. So, so queen d1, Stein was a very uh, creative player. Not creative like the people at the chess club, the creative in the good way. Okay, so h5, stopping queen h5, or so you thought. And now the brilliant, no, I'm kidding. Okay, and he plays bishop f4, developing his bishop. Bishop c4 attacking the rook. He saw it. King e8, threatening to castle. <laughs> okay, and actually he did castle, but he did that. So I was close. Knight d2 attacking the bishop, showing the folly of bishop c4. E takes f5, king d7. I told you he castled the queen side. Okay, now you might think, okay, materials equal, Opposite colored bishops, it's going to be a boring game. Not when Stein's playing. Stein always plays for the attack. Knight f3, queen b4, terrible, worst move I ever saw. a3, queen a5, terrible. Bishop g5 attacking the rook. Knight d4, and now white's a pawn ahead. h3, my favorite move of the game, because no counterplay, no rookie one check winning for black. Okay, now here's what would happen if some of you had white. Queen a7, exclam, rook e1, now rook f1 is probably fine. Rook takes e1, queen takes e1, and now for the first time in chess history, my rule must be broken. <laughs> and what's my rule, Arjun? Don't say the right move, say my rule. <laughs> Wrong rule. You, with the right answer. Uh, always, play bishop always play bishop f1, except here. Queen f1, mate, because the bishop is defending it. OK, so he didn't fall for that. He made luft. As my dad used to say, make luft, not war. h3, ah, oh, the stupid computer. You're fired, uh, ben, ben Simon. OK, h3. Now there's no back rank tricks. White's a pawn up. Black's bishop on a6 is terrible. And the opposite color bishops help white attack. b6, making the bishop on a6 good. b4, making the queen bad on a5. Queen a4, rook c1, Morphe-like, getting the last piece in the attack. Rook c2, queen f4. Wow, black's king looks really safe. It looked nonchalant at home. Don't let your dog know what's going on. Okay. Now, I shouldn't make fun of the guys at home. I got a lot of emails, and they said they beat their dogs three out of four. So I shouldn't, you know. And rook e1 check. Rook takes, queen takes. Queen f3, threatening queen a8 checkmate. Who would like to raise their hand and stop queen a8 checkmate? And as Sam Jackson would say, I dare you, I double dare you. I then he would say some more stuff. I you know how to stop Queen A. Now, if you, if, you, if you say an answer, it might not be right. Arjun, Bishop B7 is risky because of Rook E8 check. Very risky. Right. Right. So since the move that stops Queen A8 mate allows another mate, Black for some reason resigned. Amazing. Now let's give a beautiful finish for the spectators, which I just saw. King b8, check, and then rook takes bishop and mate. That's for the spectators. Okay, so if I was black, I would lose brilliantly for the spectators, but black resigned. Terrible. Now the next guy is actually a good player I've heard of. Furman. Okay, not Mark Furman, Semyon Furman. 
okay, your, your favorite exponent of the black pieces. And Furman was also a good player. I, I could do a lecture about him, but even I've barely heard of him. That's when you know. Okay, hopefully your Malinsky's not watching this. All right, so E4. Now, back in the day, Ken West will tell you, nobody played everything. They all played what they wanted to play. Fisher style, E4, that's it, okay? Or in other cases, D4 and that's it. Stein would checkmate you with D4 and E4, and super grandmasters have a code, which I shouldn't tell you, because then I have to like, you know, use my men in black thing. But I'll, I, got it, I got it here somewhere. Okay? When you play E4, that's called playing with your right hand, and F4 is with your left. Okay? So he now plays with the right hand, E4. And Sicilian, if I was playing somebody who likes to checkmate everybody, I wouldn't play the Sicilian, except that's the last game that I lost. Okay, so I guess I do play the Sicilian and get checkmated. Okay, so they play the Sicilian, and bishop e3 is not a theoretical move, and neither is bishop to d3. Okay, now again, you might think you're watching Preston play, because no theory and very sharp. The difference is the accuracy. Slight difference. Okay, and white plays totally crazy this game, and the computer loves it. Okay, and my favorite move is coming up. A3 here, knight d2, f5. All right, now, this move looks like the worst move ever, but the computer says it's the best. So, yeah, so Stein was very good at calculating tactics and giving his opponent the beat down. This position is very complicated because white can't castle due to its illegality. And white's bishop is attacked Black has a nice knight on d5. Pawn structure is a little dissimilar. White played the most aggressive move. Anyone? Queen h5. Queen h5 check. After g6, the queen is attacked and the bishop on e4 is attacked. But that's okay because the rook on h8 is now attacked by the bishop. And g6 unleashed that. So white saved his queen and now the rook is attacked. Knight f4, attacking the queen and threatening the bishop. Okay, also this bishop's hanging. So white has three pieces hanging and the engine's like white. Okay, the engines are tough. Okay, and white saved all his pieces. Bishop takes c6 check, saving one of them. And now queen e3, saving his queen and defending the bishop on d4. Now, in a total turnaround, Okay, black has both rooks attacked by both bishops. Now some of you in the audience, possibly Joe Garnier, are, wait, wait a minute, why not knight takes g2 check forking the king and queen? Ken West approved. Unfortunately, bishops move backwards. Yeah, and in fact, I was giving a lesson to Matt Larson and he played rook takes f2 and his opponent played bishop on c5 takes f2. And he wrote, bishops move backwards. <laughs> and then he resigned. Okay. Now, white had all of his pieces attacked, and now black has all his pieces attacked. The knight on f4, and both rooks in the corner. Bishop h6, defending the knight, and threatening knight takes g2 check, and knight d3 check. So most of you would resign here, with both colors. Playing each other, okay? Even if your clones were playing, they would resign too. Okay. A lot of resigning. You agree, right, Arjun? Yeah. No. Close. Okay. Queen e5, saving the queen. Rook c8, saving the rook. And he takes the rook in the corner. And they trade. And white's in an end game with an extra exchange in one pawn. Now it's like Preston's black instead of white. Because <laughs> down an exchange in a pawn in an end game. All right, and the game got really boring because White's had a lot of material. And I like the end of the game because White made it very simple at the end, okay? White's up in exchange and he got rid of all of Black's pieces, which is a good idea. And in this position, he played rook check, rook check, and took the knight. And Black is like, where'd all my pieces go? Okay, and here black resigned, because if he takes the rook, takes this, then white's looking pretty good. Computer 
Probably supercomputer after three hours would announce made. Maybe. No. Is this six pieces? Oh, it announces mate now. Yeah. In one second. This position's already known. Okay, so that was a nice crazy game Stein won where Black's King was running around. Eventually he won an end game. That was against Furman, who was a pretty good player. Not a good police officer. Okay. <laughs> now he's playing Sakharov, not the Sakharov, or as Julian would say, who? All right. You agree with that? Yeah. All right, good. All right. So he's white, because he's white every game. He plays e4 again. Now he plays bishop b5 check, d4, and now the strangest move you've ever seen. Bishop a6 is pretty strange. Bishop a6. I took with the queen. Okay, transposing into the queen d4 Sicilian somehow. Okay, and this game I like because it was very Chagorin esque which I'm sure you guys all say a lot, especially Ken West. And the reason is we got two knights against two bishops, okay? Except both black bishops were not as good as expected, okay? Took with a G pawn. Those, those bishops, not so good, okay? Luckily, black's king can safely castle king's side. No. Okay, B4, so Kokomo's happy. B5, and this is a very nice idea. Will someone who's low rated explain B4, B5? Kokomo, I want somebody low rated. Arjun, you're even lower rated. Um, B5. Did that answer my question? Yeah. What was my question? Describe what B4, B5 is. Okay, and your answer was C5. Wait, what? Circular statements are circular. Yeah. I don't even know if he's kidding anymore. I can't tell. Where? You. Well, I imagine that means things you want to put your knight on uh, B5. That guy's right, whoever that guy is. Okay. That guy's so right, he owes me money. That's how right he is. Or maybe I owe him money if he's right. All right. Anyway, Kokomo stated it properly. There's a pawn on C6 which makes knight d5 better for black. Once that pawn is gone, that is better for white. Okay, luckily black has the super active bishop on e7. He said with a dead pad express. Oh. Okay, so rook c8, knight h4. Okay, does that smell as bad as nh3, anyone? Which one's ammonium, which is ammonium? What, okay, so nh4, and white wants to play knight f5 and knight d5. And this was bug house, you get some extra knights. Okay, king h7, because the g file is open. Get your king off the open file. Queen f3, makes sense, knight f5 is coming. Takes, takes, knight d5. So this is what Arjun likes to call a Sophie's choice. If you leave the knight on d5, that's good for white. If you let the other knight go to f5, that's good for white. And that bishop on e7 is good for white. Yeah, so here the knights crush the bishops, so Chagorin's given the thumbs up, okay? Although it's not really helping him much. Okay, bishop d8, solid, knight f5, or as Vasilius Catronius would say, knife f5. Knife f5. Right, in fact, if you read the St. Louis NPR column that I write, which I'm sure you do, I, I mentioned knife f5. I'm sure you read it with a fine tooth comb. He threw the comb out. Okay. Well, hair today, gone tomorrow. All right. So now white's killing it. Look at his knights. Queen d7, that'll show him. Knight e3. He wants to keep the knight on f5, and then queen h6 mate will give white the advantage. Most of you can't move your queen like that when you get your rating as high as mine, or if you're Doug Eckert. Anyone, you get that one? Yeah, I saw that here. You saw that, yeah. One of our board members at the chess club, Doug Eckert, he's so high up in the chess club, he can move his queen any way he wants, legal or not. Okay, bishop e7, queen h5, always play. Always play. Bishop f8, unfortunately, bishop takes f5, double question mark. 
Man, if it was me, I'd play bishop f8. Okay, then I would have won. Okay, now you're going to learn your favorite German word, Ken West. Nine. The answer to that is nine. Close. Do the other one. Zwischenzug. After bishop f5, all of you are wondering, queen f5, knife f5, ef5, and none of those are right. The correct answer is Pat Buchanan. What? Queen f7. Bam. I would bet a lot of money he didn't see that. If we could go back to 1960, we could ask him. Okay, black played the best move. Knight f5. Yeah, and now, uh, not so good. There's good and there's not good. That's not good. So the bishop stayed on e7 for quite a long time. I think he played bishop e7 and left it there. So that wasn't a good bishop. I hope white resigned here, or black, somebody. Go back once, go back once bam. Oh, went to d8, then to e7. That showed him. Yeah. yeah. Okay, and, and black resigned. Remember, Stein likes to checkmate people. I don't. I like offer a draw. I don't play. I do everything but checkmate people. Okay, now he played Zurakov, as you would say. Or Zurakov, I don't know. Okay, I never heard of this guy, so he got crushed. e4. More Sicilians, and we see a rouser Sicilian. No, not a rousing Sicilian, a rouser. Named after which grandmaster, Ken West? Say rouser. rouser. Correct. Well, he might not have been a grandmaster. I was going to say Richter. Richter Rouser, very good. Okay, E6. This is still like the main line today. A6, the super grandmasters still play like this. Okay, I, I play black in this position all the time. Bishop F4. Now, Ken West is confused, okay, and that's not really saying much. Now, Ken West is like, wait a minute, I got two ways to win for black. Okay, Arjun's hand, he got both hands up. Arjun's like, I got two ways to win. He's like, E5 wins, or I could take and then play E5 and win. Unfortunately, neither one of those work. Are you shocked? Okay, let's, let's find out why. Play E5, we take. And we take, shocking everybody, except Peter Gabriel, because it was 1960. He would be shocked sometime in the 80s. Yeah, exactly. Now, pawn takes bishop is risky because of queen d3. No, <laughs> because of queen d4. Queen d5? Queen, D, queen g5 attacking both queens. No, queen takes queen, checkmate, and the whole board is destroyed in a nuclear holocaust. Okay of biblical proportions. All right, and so, uh, okay, so e5 doesn't work. If you trade first, which is also gonna destroy the game, and then play e5, Ken West, who remembers the last tactic, will now explain the next one. Yes. <laughs> Bishop takes e5. And as we say, en français, c'est la même chose, oui? Tu comprends, non? It's the same. Yeah, takes and, and queen d5, queen d They're all bad, but queen d is good. Checkmate. Okay, so black played the book move. I guess it was book in 1960, but I didn't know about it then. He played bishop to d7. Okay, now the idea is quite complicated. If white tries to win the d6 pawn, he will lose his e pawn and I've actually had that. I've had somebody play, knight takes, bishop takes, bishop takes, 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 everybody takes everything. I think I took this. And okay, material's equal, black is slightly better. Uh, that's the point of bishop d7 as we attack the e pawn. Okay, white plays, knight takes, and then some weird happens. Okay, queen e3, and I think nowadays, uh, people will play queen e1 or f3. But okay, this is 1960, so give them a break. Queen e3. All right. And I've had black in this position, although not this position. Okay. And mm, bad stuff happened to black because black didn't play very well from now on. Black's king stayed on e8, and white just tore him up. Now, in my professional opinion, 
since Stein liked to checkmate everybody and play for an attack, you probably shouldn't play the most complicated line in chess where that happens. Play something boring. If you're playing me, then you should play like that because I like boring. Okay, but don't do that. Just hang all your pieces. All right, queen c7, breaking the pin, walking into another pin. Bishop e2, b5. Now that doesn't work. White's king, black's king is terrible. e5, as I would say, rawr. Takes, takes, queen moves again. Rawr. Bishop h5, and even Kokomo sees the threat. He's going to take, uh, e take the pawn on e6 because the f pawn is pinned. But his opponent didn't like that. So his opponent played e5, very positional. Okay, but probably losing anyway because his king is terrible. f4 attacking in the center, b4 counterattack, knight retreats, e4 stopping the center from getting open, knight g3. And I don't like black's king. That's an understatement. Queen a7. Most of you would trade queens. <laughs> Terrible. Queen b3. And now, I was mildly surprised that black resigned here. Mildly. And then I turned my engine on, and it blew up. I did a new computer. <laughs> okay, plus 8 for white. Equal material. Man, when you're minus eight and it's equal material, man, are you in trouble. First of all, queen e6 check is the biggest smackdown of all time. It mates and wins all of black's pieces. Wow. For example, let's play a stupid move. Queen e6 check. If bishop e7, then checkmate with advantage. And if queen e7, that's even worse. That's worse than checkmate. Terrible. All right. So, man, queen e6 check's annoying. Man. This is the worst position I ever saw. Okay, so white's king very safe. White's pawn structure pretty good. Black's king terrible. Pawn structure terrible. Terrible. Always play bishop f8. He didn't play it, it just stayed there. You with some crazy comment. After queen 6, queen 7, isn't bishop takes out 7 check? Incorrect, because queen c6 is more powerful. Yeah. You'd rather checkmate than play queen c6? Yeah. If you play bishop c6 and you, or bishop f7, they'll say, that's not me, and they'll argue. That's what I want. Oh, OK, then, then you should do it. All right, so we have an improvement. All right, so black resigned. All right, now we're going to get to the real players. Well, not this guy. Why am I showing this game? All right, this is uh, Rufus's brother. Rufus? Yeah, Sicilian. And what's this Sicilian called? Anybody? Anyone? Ha, ah, it wasn't called the, the no, it's called no, Nightorf. Can I help you? All right. The Nightorf Sicilian. This is the sharpest. That's how they rolled in 1960. Again, when your opponent likes to checkmate and sacrifice, probably the wrong opening to play. The sharpest Sicilian ever. Okay, Rawr. Now, they're not going to play this way today. They're not going to give away all the squares, but OK. Now, grandmasters today would play b5 here, but OK, knight bd7. Knight e5 attacking the queen. He saw it. Whoa. Now, e6 has tremendous pressure. Queen b6 attacking the knight. Castles. Now, most of you would take the knight, and then bishop b5 check, followed by rook takes queen. So his opponent didn't do that. His opponent did some crazy thing rooting the computer. Right, that was funny. OK, so he played knight fg4, threatening knight f2, forking everything, and white resigned, and Stein quit chess forever. Class dis No, no. Played bishop takes e7, knight f2. Remember, when you're playing a great attacking player, leave your king in the center and let them take the pieces in front of it. Because then they'll hook them up a little bit. All right, knight f2, attacking the queen. Queen e3, tagging the knight, and defending the knight on d4. Takes, takes, knight c6. If you play king takes, that doesn't look too safe. Now, 
I think f6 check wins, and I think f takes e6 wins. I like them both. The idea is I want to play knight f5 check, and then queen takes queen. Also, your king's really safe on e7. All right. So he played knight c6, which is crazy. Bishop takes d6. Knight takes d4, threatening, threatening, threatening. Knight b3 check, winning the queen. And queen takes bishops, OK. Queen g3, stopping everything. Now black illegally castled. Oh, no, he didn't. Always stop castling with bishop f8. Rook g8. Now, I've been married twice. And one of my wives, I can't remember which one. I, I remember which one. Uh, she would play the knight of Sicilian. And occasionally, she would play rook g8. And when she played rook g8, it worked out well for her opponent. Okay? <laughs> Don't play rook g8 when you play the Sicilian. Don't do that. Because then your king is on e8, and your rook's on g8. Terrible. So it's better to lose all your pieces than play rook g8, as you'll see here. Bishop c4, black's king is not good. Bishop e5 attacking the knight. f6, always play f6. Knight a4 attacking the queen. Bishop takes, takes. Queen d3 threatening. Queen takes bishop checkmate. Now, the funniest move you've ever seen. Yeah. Indeed. Yeah. Some of you don't think it's legal, but he did it. Even the computer lets me do it. Now, I have a funny story because I like stories. Twice, students have told me this. Both students were A players. Both students were playing A players. These are different stories. They castled with their rook through check, and their opponent said it was illegal. And the director was called, the director was probably lower rated than the players. So there's two A players who don't know the castling rules, and they played my students who are A players who do know the castling rules. And my students won somehow. You. Queen C3 check? Are you trying to play knight B6 mate with his Wishenzug? Yeah. Yeah, but trying is the first step to failure. Queen c3 is better than what Stein played. Stein played the most obvious move. Queen d6. Yeah. Man, that's harsh. Maybe your move's not better. Yeah. Your move's funnier. My move is funnier. Yeah. That's what I was trying for. Funny. Yeah, but I just want to point out that Rook's good on g8. <laughs> all right. So that was the most brutal of all wins. Because, man, black's super resigned now. And no matter what, Martin's, Martin's not going to say nothing. Martin usually says, why did black resign? Not here. Martin's like, I recommend resign, right? Uh, yeah, because May, you know, terrible. Yeah. yeah. Also, knight b6 is good, right? Yeah. yeah. Queen c5 is good. I didn't see knight b6. <laughs> yeah. OK. Now we get to the good players. Stein, Bronstein. Oh, this will answer your original question. Yeah, that's, this game will determine who's better, not the other times they played. Right. OK. So e4, d6. Now, Bronstein liked to crazy it up, and Stein liked to crazy it up. So no draws. OK, so they played a modern Pierce something. Time to opposite side castle. OK, as crazy as possible. Yeah, it is crazy. Now, there's one thing I like about this game. White plays rook h3 and then plays rook back to h1, rook g1, and g4. He's not, he's not deterred, okay? And he does. You thought I was kidding, but I wasn't. See? <laughs> Told you. Yeah, okay? Black doesn't want to castle because he's afraid he'll get checkmated. And so both sides are going to attack the king. And he finally castles after not finding anything better. Queen e3, a4, f4. Solid. Notice, if white plays f4 here, knight takes e4 is annoying. So he defended his pawn, then played f4. f5, both sides are getting checkmated. That's what you expect from Stein and Bronstein. Takes, 
All right, we got four ways to take on b3, probably not queen takes, although maybe. Okay. Took with a c pawn, keeping everything blocked on the queen side. d5, opening everything up, takes, takes, d6, bishop e7, and now you may have heard in the past two bishops are good, even though Stein's two knights crushed the two bishops, not these two bishops. Now those are bishops. Now when he played bishop e7, half of you are thinking bishop f8, good students. The other half are thinking Arby's. <laughs> and the other half are thinking rook g6, which is what I was thinking. And the other half are thinking, man, there's a lot of halves around here. Okay. Yeah. Rook takes g6 is pretty good. Bishop takes, yeah, everything's pretty good. King h7, preventing rook takes g6, unpinning the f-pawn. Knight d4, tagging the queen. Knight f3 to play knight e5 or knight g5, they both win. And black's king comes under too much fire. Bam! Bishop e6. It's tough but fair. Also, white has an extra piece, which is also good. And black getting checkmated and white's queening his d-pawn and white's up a piece, black resigned. So that was the best Bronstein could do. Terrible. No, he's okay. Okay, so that was one of the best players you ever beat until he beat your favorite world champion. Was that a good noise? Was that you or that was something else? Oh, hey. I thought that was your camera going crazy. Okay. He beat my Petrosian. I mean, Tigran Petrosian. Not to be confused with Tigran Petrosian, who plays now. Yeah. Now, Tigran Petrosian died in the 80s. And when he played in the Chicago Open two or three years ago, somebody else named Tigran Petrosian, one of the directors was really impressed that the former world champion was playing. He should have been even more impressed since he had died over 20 years earlier. Okay. Uh, so Stein beat Petrosian in 1961, and this was in the Soviet championship. Now, I don't know about you guys, but I think Petrosian was pretty good in 1961. That's my opinion, because he was. Okay. So Stein's white. Petrosian plays the French. Where's Marler? No, no, Marler? All right. Okay, and we have your favorite variation. Anybody? The Winowar. Grandmaster knows. Okay, and then this happened. Okay, C5 is the main line. Yeah, this is still the main line. Okay. And he played Knight F5. Yeah, they don't play Knight F5 anymore. They play castles. But they used to play knight f5. Then Petrosian got crushed by Stein, so they stopped. <laughs> Bishop d3, threatening to take the knight and then take on g7. h5. What's the threat, Arjun? I said Arjun, you have to raise your hand. Right, and then who's better? Slightly, slightly. Okay, then he moved back. Queen f4. Knight c6, dubious. Annotations by some guy. 92 X clan. It's like the most obvious normal move. 97, knight G3, kicking out the knight. Knight G6, question mark. So black played knight C6, knight E7, knight G6, showing how the knight moves. <laughs> Queen D2, bishop D7, which also the annotator doesn't like. Rook B1. Now. If you've been to my lecture where I showed Karpov's dismantling of Komsky in 1992, the lecture wasn't in 92, it was about a year or two ago. In that game, white was winning on the king's side and then he started winning on the queen's side. So the rook on a1, not the best square for the rook. Rook b1, much better. Rook b8, castles. c4, not very explosive here. Bishop e2 attacking the pawn. Knight takes g3. And now we're going to vote. It should be a landslide. Should be. 
So let's think about it, and then I'll ask your question, which I'm sure you already know the question. And you can vote at home too. All you have to do is send me money, and your votes will count double. All right, who votes for H takes G3? Arjun's like, just me? And who votes for F takes G3? Wow, two to one. The abstentions have it. Okay, now he didn't take either way. This was the best Zwischen's look of the game. No, I'm kidding. F takes G3. Because we want the F file open for our rook, and we don't want the H file open for his rook. So F takes G3 is the best. H4, bishop to G4. And this is something I tell all of my advanced students. You're not my advanced students, so I can't tell you. All right, I'll tell you. We have a grandmaster in the house. When you make a move, whatever you just moved isn't where it was. Think about that a little bit. Yeah. Okay. My beginning students would be like, what? Okay. So there was a black pawn on h5. I can prove it. Proved it. And he moved it. Therefore, it's not on h5. Whenever your opponent makes a move, you should think about what that, where that piece was and what it was doing. Well, it was defending the g4 square, and now it's not, so bishop g4. Now we attack. Takes, takes. Wait, what happened? All right. Queen e7, terrible. a4, double exclam. These moves are played often in the Winowar French because white wants to play bishop a3, and you can't do it with the pawn on a3. Of course, white will have to play rook a1. That takes a whole move. Arr. But it's worth it. Bishop takes a4, rook a1, and bishop a3. He got the job done. And Petrosian's king is very safe on e8. It's not, not safe. Okay. King on e8, no good. Rook f2, rook f1, and then all this stuff happened, went backwards. Yeah. It was edited out. Okay. And now queen to d8. And Arjun, if I was annotating this game, what would I say about queen d8? What would I say? Yeah, maybe. But I would say setting up for the next game. Yeah. And you would say double x. And double x clam. Right. Queen to d1, my favorite move ever until the next move. So when you play queen d1, he wants the queen to go to f3, and he wants the bishop to go to h5. Now, if you thought queen d1 was a retreat, you don't know what a retreat is. Because after rook h6, now we're going to see a retreat. Julian. That's a retreat? That's a retreat. Bam. Okay. He was on a good diagonal, but that one's better. I didn't say there's anything wrong with it. No. What's right with it? I Continue. Okay. What? Yeah. So you want to make 30 moves in a row and take your own bishop? Right. Okay. Good plan. Good plan. Yay. All right. Bishop c1, threatening bishop h6. Simple. Rook h7. And now, white made two moves at the same time. That's why he was so good. Move one was the beat down, and move two was the smack down. You. Bam. Yeah, and backwards. Bishop e6. I hate when that happens. Now, the guy who annotated this game, a suspicious character, he, he explained what happens on pawn takes bishop. He also explained what happens on knight h8. That was very funny. Man, if black plays knight h8, I don't know what I'll do. All right. So black resigned. But after bishop takes e6, f takes e6, queen g4. Now we're threatening queen takes knight check, winning the rook, and queen takes e6 check, winning everything. Who would like to suggest a move for black? Hanging the bishop. Uh, 
right? Yeah. I take it. Yeah. That's called like uh, saving it off one move. Yeah. 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 Then yeah. A good plan. That's the computer's plan. Yeah. Then keep, between H four and yeah. <laughs> yes, Martin. Rook where? Here? Mm -hmm. I go check, and then I take your rook. Yeah, that's not good. Yeah, yeah. That's what he did. Knight e7. seven exclam. OK, now after queen e6, rook f8, I don't know which wins more. I'm so old. Well, queen e6, rook h8, I can't refute. I can't, I'm old. OK, this I know wins a queen. This I can see. Yeah, I know. Yeah. Okay. So after so after Bishop e6, he resigned. Now you guys are like, yeah, but Petrosian didn't lose a lot of games. He didn't lose a lot of games where he got crushed, checkmated, king in the center, rooks doubled on the seventh rank. Okay, that's probably the worst crush that anybody's ever done against Petrosian. Uh, unfortunately, Stein and or Stein, he died young. So I think in Stein's honor, we should all have a beer. Mm -hmm.